eliminating non-essentials. The big problem of individual success is the problem of eliminating non-essentials, of hewing to the line, letting the chips fall where they may. Most of the things that steal your time, strength, money, and energy are nothing but chips. If you pay too much attention to them, you will never hew out anything worthwhile. No vain regrets. If you are a thoracic, don't regret the fact that you are not a one decision a year man, but try to make fewer and better decisions. Your quickness, if called into counsel, will enable you to see from what instincts your mistakes habitually arise and the direction in which most of them have pointed. And you will see this with so much greater dispatch than the average person that you will lose little time. You should begin today to analyze your most common error in judgment that you may guard against their recurrence. Always slightly thrilled. Even when apparently composed, the thoracic is always a wee bit thrilled. Everything he sees, hears, touches, tastes, or smells give him such keen sensation that he lives momentarily in some kind of adventure. He languishes in an unchanging environment. And find monotony almost unbearable. Lights and shadows never two minutes the same fitly describe this type. He passes rapidly from one vivid sensation to another, and expresses each one so completely that he is soon ready for the next. He has fewer complexes than any other type because he does not inhibit as much. The uncorked bottle, the lid is always off the thoracic. This being the case, he suffered little from mental congestion, though he sometimes paid a high price for his self-expression. Everybody is interesting. Most of us are much more interesting than the world suspects, but the world is not made up of mind readers. We keep our most interesting thoughts, the most interesting sides of ourselves, hidden away. Even your dearest friends are seldom given a peep into the actual you. And this, despite the fact that we all recognize this as a deficiency in others, we bottle up ourselves and defy the world's corkscrews, all save the thoracic. He allows his associates to see much of what is passing in his mind all the time, because we are all interested in the real individual and not in mass. This type is usually much sought after. No secrets. The thoracic does not, by preference, cover up. He does not, by preference, secret. He does not, except when necessary, keep his pen and ways dark. He is likely to tell not only his family but his nearest acquaintance just what he is planning to do and how he expects to do it. The naturally secretive person who regularly refers to a certain party when he has occasion to speak of another is the exact opposite of this type. His human interest. We are all interested in the little comings and goings of our friends. Upon this fact, every magazine and newspaper builds its human interest stories. We may be indifferent to what the President of the United States is doing about international relations, but what he had for breakfast is mightily interesting. Few people read in ogled addresses, significant though they often are to the world and to the reader himself. But if the President would write. Ten volumes on just how I spend my Sundays, it would be a bestseller. Naturally confidential, personal experiences, personal secrets, and personal preference are subjects we are all interested in. These are the very things in which the thoracic regales his friend, and about which he is more frank and outspoken than any other type. He makes many friends by his obvious openness and his capacity for seeing the interesting details which others overlook. Charming conversational list. Colorful, vivid words and phrases come easily to the tongue of this type, for he sees the unusual, the fascinating in everything. Since anyone can make a thing interesting to others if he is really interested in it himself, the thoracic makes others see and feel what he describes. He is therefore known as the most charming conversational list. Beautiful voice. The most beautiful voice belongs to people who are largely of this type. This is due, as we have said before, to physiological causes. The high chest, 
sensitive vocal cords, capacious sounding boards in the nose and roof of the mouth all tend to give the voice of the thoracic many nuances and accents never found in other types. His pleasing voice, plus his vividness of his expressions, and his lack of reticence in giving the intimate and interesting details are other traits which help to make the thoracic a lively companion. The lure of spontaneity. The most beloved people in the world are the spontaneous. We lead such drab lives ourselves and keep back so much. We like to see a little Niagara of human emotion occasionally. The thoracic feels everything keenly. Life's experience make vivid record on the sensitive page of his mind. He puts them on the rectora that is himself and proceeds to run them off for your entertainment. Sometimes a bubbler, a constant stream of talk must have been first set in describing this type. For while others are carefully guarding their real feeling and force, the thoracic goes merrily on relieving himself of this. More sedate and somber types call the thoracic bubbler or spouters, just for this reason. The incessant talker. That person's talk gets on my nerves is a remark often made by one of the state stiff type concerning the seldom silent, extremely florid individual. So natural is this to the thoracic that he is entirely unconscious of the wearing effect he has on other people. A sense of humor. Seeing the funny side of everything is a capacity which comes more naturally to this type than to others. This is due to the psychological fact that nothing is truly humorous save what is slightly out of plumb. Real humor lies in detecting and describing that intangible quirk. No type has the sensitiveness essential to this in any such degree as the thoracic. Individuals of other types sometimes possess a keen sense of humor. This trait is not confined to the thoracic, but it is a significant fact that almost every humorist of note has had this type as the first or second element in his makeup. The human fireworks, he is a skyrocket or she is a firefly, are phrases often used to describe that vivacious individual whose adeptness as we party puts the rest of the crowd in the background. These people are always largely or purely thoracic. They never belong predominantly to the fourth type. The next time you find such a person, note how his eyes flash, how his color comes and goes, and the many indescribable gradation of voice which make him the center of things. He is always shooting sparks," said a man recently in describing a florid, high-chested friend. Never doubt commonly. His line may not interest you, but the thoracic himself is usually interesting. He is an actual curiosity to the quiet, inexpressive people, who never can fathom how he managed to talk so frankly and so fast. Such a person is seldom dull. He is everything from a condiment to a cocktail, and has the same effect on the average group of more or less drabbed personalities. Lives in the highs and depths. Glad one moment and sad the next. Is the way the ticker would read if it could make a record of the inner feelings of the average thoracic. These feelings often come and go without his having the least notion of what causes them. Ordinarily, these unaccountable moods are due to sensations reaching his subconscious mind, of which no cognizance is taken by his conscious processes. Called intuitive, this ability to get things. To respond quickly with his physical reaction while devoting his mental ones to something else, has obtained for this type the reputation of possessing more intuition than others. Sources of hunches: That there is no such thing as intuition in the old sense of getting a hunch from the outside is now agreed by psychologists. The thing we have called intuition, they maintain, is not due to irregular or supernatural causes. But to our own normal natural mental processes, the impression that he gets this knowledge or suspicion from the outside is due, the scientists say, to the fact that his thinking has proceeded at such lightning like speed that he was unable to watch the wheels go round. The only thing of which he is conscious is the final result or sum at the bottom of the column called his hunch. He is not aware of the addition and subtraction which his mind went through to get it for him. Easily excited, 
Off like a shot is a term often applied to the Thoracic. He is the most easily excited of all types, but also the most easily calmed. He recovers from every mood more quickly and more completely than other types. Under the influence of emotion, he often does things for which he is sorry immediately afterward. On the spur of the moment, this type usually does a thing quickly or not at all. He is a gun that is always cocked. So he hits a great many things in the course of a lifetime, and leads the most exciting existence of any type. Being able to get thrills out of the most commonplace event because of seeing elements in it which others overlook, he finds in everyday life more novelty than others ever see. The adventurers, romance and adventure always interest this type. He lives for thrills and novel reactions. And usually spares no pain or money to get them. A very slangy but very expressive term used frequently by these people is, "I got a real kick out of that." This craving for adventure, suspense, and jest usually lures this type into speculation, gambling, and various games of chance. The danger in flying, deep sea diving, auto racing, and similar fields have a strong appeal for this type. So strong that practically every man or woman who follows these professions is of this type. Tires of sameness. The thoracic soon tires of the same suit, the same gown, the same house, the same town, and even the same girl. He wrings the utmost out of each experience so quickly and so completely that he is forever on the lookout for new worlds to conquer. Past experiences are to him as so many lemons out of which he has taken all the juice. He anticipates those of the future as so many more to be utilized in the same way. Like responsive people, we all like answers. We want to be assured that what we have said or done has registered. The thoracic is always saying or doing something and can't understand why other people are so unresponsive. He is as responsive as a radio wire. Everything hits the mark with him, and he lets you know it. So naturally, he enjoys the same from others, and considers those less expressive than himself stiff, formal, or dull. The kind of person the thoracic likes best is one sufficiently like himself to nod, smile, and show that he fully understands, but who will not interrupt his stream of talk. People he dislikes. The stolid, indifferent, or cold are people the thoracic comes very near disliking. The evident self-complacency and immobility are things he does not understand at all, and with which he has little patience. Such people seem to him to be cold, unfeeling, almost dead. So he steers clear of them. It was surely a thoracic who first called these people sticks, but the reason for their acting like sticks will be apparent in another chapter. His pet aversions, whereas the alimentive avoid people he does not care for, the thoracic is inclined to betray his aversions. He occasionally delights to put people he dislikes at a disadvantage by his wit or satire. The stony individual who walks through life like an onion peeler is a complete mystery to the thoracic, and the peeler returns the compliment. We do not like anything we do not understand. And we seldom understand anything that differs decidedly from ourselves. Thus, we distrust and dislike foreigners, and to a greater or lesser extent, other families, people from other sections of the country, etc. The Easterner and Westerner has a natural distrust of each other, and the civil war is not the only reason for the incompatibility of Southerners and Northerners. So it is with individuals, those who differ too widely in type. Never understand each other. They have too little of the chief thing that builds friendships: emotions in common. The forgiving man. If you have once been a real friend of the thoracic, and a quarrel comes between you, he may be ever so bitter and biting in the moment of his anger, but in most cases he will forgive you eventually. Really forget disagreements. It is not as easy for other types to forgive. They often refrain from attempting a reconciliation, but the thoracic's forgiveness is not only spontaneous but genuine. The alimentive bear no grudges because it is too much trouble. 
The Thoracic finds it hard to maintain a grouch because he gets over it just as he gets over everything else. His anger oozes away or he wakes up some fine morning and finds, like the boy recovering from the chicken boss, that he simply hasn't it anymore. Diseases he is most susceptible to Acute diseases are the ones chiefly affecting this type. Everything in his organism tends to suddenness and not to sameness. Just as he is inclined to get into and out of psychological experiences quickly, so he is inclined to sudden illnesses and to sudden recuperations. A thoracic seldom has any kind of chronic ailment. If he acquires a superabundance of aquadupus, he is in danger of apoplexy. The combination of extreme thoracic and extreme alimentive tendencies is the cause of this disease. Likes Fancy Foods Variety and novelty in food are much enjoyed by this type. The alimentive like loss of rich food, but he is not so desirous of various or freak dishes, but the thoracic specialize in them. You cannot mention any kind of strange new dish whose investigation won't appeal to someone in the crowd, and that person is always somewhat thoracic. It gives him another promise of newness. Foreign dishes of all kinds depend for the introduction into this country almost entirely upon these foreign patrons. According to the statements of restaurants, this type says, I will try anything once. Many course dinners, if the food is good, are especially popular with them. The trimmings at dinner. Out of the ordinary surroundings in which to dine are always welcome to this type. The hangings, pictures, and furniture mean much to him. Most people like music and meals, but to the thoracic it is almost indispensable. He is so alive in every nerve, so keyed up, and has such intense capacity for enjoyment of many things simultaneously that he demands more than other types. An attentive waiter who ministers to every movement and anticipates every wish is also a favorite with the thoracic when out for dinner. Sensitive to his surroundings. Colorful surroundings are more necessary to the thoracic than to other types. The ever changing fashion in house decorations are welcome innovations to him. He soon grows tired of a thing regardless of how much he likes it to begin with. Take notice amongst your friends, and you will see that the girl who changes the furniture all around every few weeks is invariably of this type. It makes me feel that I have changed my location and takes the place of a trip, explained one girl not long ago. Wants something different. The exact color of hangings, wallpaper, interior decorations and accessories are matter of vital importance to this type, whereas the alimentive demand comfort. The thoracic asks for something different, something that catches and holds the eyes, that makes an instantless impression upon the onlooker and gives him one more thing by which to remember the personality of the one who lives there. This type considers his room and home as part of himself and takes the pains with them which he bestows upon his clothes. When he is rich, wealth to the thoracic means unlimited opportunity for achieving the unusual in everything. His tastes are more extravagant than those of other types. Uncommon works of art are usually found in the homes of this type. The most extraordinary things from the most extraordinary places are a special preference with him. He carries out his desire for attention here as in everything else, and what he buys will serve that end directly or indirectly. Fashion and Flair Flair aptly describes the quality with the pure thoracic design in all that touches him and his personality. It must have worth and go and distinctiveness. It must be the latest and the thing. He is the last type of all to submit to wearing last year's suit, singing last year's songs, or driving is a last year's model. Life Stash The thoracic wants everything he wears, drives, lives in, or owns to get across to make an impression. The fat man loves comfort above all else, but the florid man loves distinction. He does not demand such easy-to-wear garments as the fat man. On the contrary, he will undergo extreme discomfort if it gives him a distinctive appearance. He wants his house to be elegant, the grounds different, the view unusual. 
has color sense, whereas the fat man, when furnishing a home, devotes his attention to soft beds, steam heat, and plenty of cushioned divans. The thoracic thinks of the chandeliers, the unusual chairs, the pretty front doorstep, the landscape gardening, and the color schemes. When he is in moderate circumstances, when only well-to-do, this type will be found to have carried out furnishing and decoration with the taste worthy of much larger purses. When merely well-to-do, he wears the very best clothes he can possibly afford, and often a good deal better. This type does not purpose to be outwitted by life. He tries always to put up a good showing. When he is poor, the thoracic is seldom poor. He has so much personality, ginger, and gold of the sort that is required in the world of today that he usually has a good position. He may not like the position, but in spite of the fact that he finds it harder to tolerate disagreeable things than any other type, he will endure it, for he knows that the rewards he is after cannot be had by the down and outer. The natural and normal vanity of the thoracic. Stands him in hand here more than in almost any other place in life. The world entertained by them, behind every row of footlights, you will find more people of this type than any other. The alimentive manages the world, but the thoracic entertains it. He comprises more of the dancers, actors, operatic stars, and general entertainers than any other two types combined. In everything save acrobatics and oratory, he holds the platform laurels. As already pointed out, his adaptability, spontaneity, and love of approval are responsible for this. His fastidious habits. The thoracic is the most fastidious of all the types. His thin skin and sensitive nerves makes him more conscious of roughness and slovenliness than others. The result is that he is what is called more particular about his person than of other types. The fat man often wears an old pair of shoes long past their usefulness, but the florid man thinks more of the impression he creates than of his own personal comfort, and will wear the shiniest of patent leathers on the hottest day if they are the best match for his suit. Likes all music. Every kind of music is enjoyed by the pure thoracic. Because he experiences so many moods, entertainment he prefers. Social affairs of an exclusive order, where he wears his bed bit and tucker, and everybody else does the same, are amongst the favorable diversions of this type. He makes a favorable impression under such condition, and is well aware of it. Other reason for this preference are his brilliant conversational powers. His charm and his enjoyment of other people and their viewpoints. The thoracic is also exceedingly fond of dancing, enjoys vaudeville. The average thoracic enjoy vaudeville, follies, and revues, etc., because they are full of quick changes of program. He enjoys, as does every type, certain kinds of movies, but he constitutes no such percentage of the movie-going audience as some other types. Reading. Books and stories that are romantic, adventurous, and different are the favorites of this type. Detective stories are often in high favor with him also. Physical assets: the physical advantages of this type are his quick energy, based on his wonderful breathing system, and the rich, rapid flowing blood, produced by his wonderful heart system. He is noted for his ability to get his second wind. And has remarkable capacity for rising to sudden physical emergencies. Physical liabilities, a tendency to overexcitement and the consequent running down of his batteries, is a physical pitfall often fatal to this type. Favorite sports, hurdling, sprinting, tennis, and all sports requiring short, intense spurts of energy are the ones in which this type excels. Social assets. Charms and responsiveness are the chief social assets of the thoracic. Inasmuch as these are the most valuable of all social traits, he has a better natural start in human relationships than any other type. Social liabilities: quick temper, his inflammable nature, and appearance of vanity are his greatest social liabilities. They stand between him and success many times. 
he must learn to control them if he decide to reap the full benefit of his remarkable assets. Emotional assets, instantaneous sympathy and a lack of poisonous inhibitions are the outstanding emotion assets of this type. Emotional liabilities, impatient micro emotions and the expenditure of too much of his electricity in every little experience are the tendency most to be guarded against. Business assets, that he is a good mixer. And has the magnetism to interest and attract others are his most valuable business traits. Business liabilities, an appearance of flightiness and his tendency to hop from one subject to another, stand in the way of the thoracic promotion many times. Domestic strength, the ability to entertain and please his own family and to give of himself to them as freely as he gives himself to the world at large. Is one of the most lovable thoracic traits. Domestic weakness, the temperament and temper of this type constitute a real domestic problem for those who live with them. But they are so forgiving themselves that it is almost impossible to hold anything against them. Should aim at, the thoracic should aim at making fewer decisions, at finishing what he starts. And of wasting less energy in unnecessary words and motions, should avoid all situations, conditions, and people who slip the belt off the wheel, who tend to cut life off into bits by dissipation or pleasure seeking, should be avoided by this type because they arrogate his own weakness in that direction. Strong points, personal ambition, adaptability, and quick physical energy are the strongest points of the thoracic. Weakest points: too great excitability, irresponsibility, and supersensitiveness are the weakest points of this type. How to deal with this type socially? Give him aesthetic surroundings, encourage him to talk, and respond to what he says. These are the certain methods for winning him in social intercourse. How to deal with this type in business? Get his name on the dotted line now, or don't expect it. If he is an employee, let him come into direct contact with people. Give his personality a chance to get business for you. Don't forget to praise him when deserved, and don't pin him down to routine. This type succeeds best in professions where his personal charm can be capitalized, and does not belong in any strictly commercial business. Remember, the chief distinguishing mark of the thoracic, in the order of their importance, are flushed complexion. High chest and long waist. Any person who has this is largely of the thoracic type. No matter what other types might be included in his mix.